nice. It's a very nice shirt. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to wear the crap out of it now. <laughs> you know me. Yeah. What are all these boxes doing here? Well, those are holiday gifts. Oh, look at that. Those are holiday gifts we just received. We're going to do an unboxing. Hey, guys. Hey. Welcome to a fun edition of What Car or Truck Should I Buy? As always, it's my man... Andre and Roman saying thanks for taking the time to join us in this weird time between uh, Christmas and New Year's, Andre. Well, yeah, but it's a cool time because we can talk cars and trucks. Yeah, we're going to talk cars and trucks. And we're going to answer your questions, and boy, we got a lot of them over the holidays. We're here. We've written them out here. We're also going to do a couple unboxings because we got a bunch of presents in the mail. So we're going to unbox this. We're going to unbox that. That is a box from Jim Morrison, the head of Ram. That's thank really you, cool. And that's a box from Toyota? Yeah, it's a box from Toyota, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so thank you, Jim. Thank you, Toyota. And thank you guys for joining us. And let's get right to it, Andre. All right. Well, question number one comes from Terry. Yep. And this is car and truck question. Okay, good. And this is the headline question. So, I'm looking to buy a new vehicle in 2019. I'm looking at the Ford Ranger XLT FX4 or the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. I have a budget of 50 grand. Wow, that's a good budget. That's a good budget. Congratulations, <laughs> Terry. That's a really good budget. And uh, uh, um, it's going to have everything on it. So whatever he, he buys, Jeep Cherokee or Ford Ranger, it should have all the options. I actually or, have the perfect answer. Yeah, what's that? What do you think? Neither? Yeah. <laughs> the Gladiator, dude. Get the Gladiator. For 50K, you wait six months and get yourself a Gladiator. And that way you've got the best of both worlds. Because you're asking about a truck or about or a Jeep. A Jeep. Yeah. which is a crossover, so why not get the one that is both? Get the truck and the This Jeep. is an interesting question because, it, like you said, I mean, it, they're both lifestyle vehicles, yeah. right? Yeah. So Cherokee Trailhawk, it, you know, it's a most afford worthy Cherokee. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the Ranger FX4, we just, we have one in the office. Yeah. We're, we're testing it yeah. right as we speak. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a truck. So what do you want there? Do you want to carry things? Or and do tow. you want to and tow? Or do you want to carry people? And Roman is saying you could potentially do both yeah. with a Gladiator. Yeah, and go off-road. And go off-road, too. Yeah, so, you know, the problem, of course, with these questions is there's never enough detail for us to answer them in a thoughtful manner, Andre, right? It's like saying, do you want a chocolate, you know, I've got a chocolate chip cookie or i got an oatmeal raisin cookie. Which one should I eat? And I'm like, dude, do you like chocolate chips or are do you, you like raisins? Are you allergic to chocolate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. So some of the people are... are uh, are, are chiming in. They're saying avoid the ZF nine-speed transmission, and you know we don't do long-term reliability. I'm not sure that's uh, you know a fair statement, but it's certainly something that people are saying. Which is uh, the Jeep thing? Yeah, which is a Jeep thing. Yeah. Uh, another uh, Carlos is saying buy a diesel ZR2. Um, <laughs> now or wait for the Gladiator. So that's also a good one. Uh, Ranger. Well, uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, you know it's also hard to answer that because once again, I don't know, dude, if you like cookies or if you like if you like raisins or if you like chocolate chips. So why don't we unbox this, Andre? Okay, speaking of chocolate chips. Yeah, because I want to I wanna find out what the heck uh, Jim oh, said. Okay. Thank okay, you, Jim. Okay. That was so thoughtful of you. So I got a note from Jim Morrison, yes. and he wrote, is the note in here, Zach, or is it, is it disappeared? It's on my desk. It's on your desk. Yes. Anyway, basically he, wrote... He that, said thank you for... Thank you for, for uh, buying... Uh, for buying a Ram truck. For buying a Ram truck, right. which is very nice. Uh, and look at that. He sent us... Wow, Whoa! Uh, a Ram... Backpack. Uh, a really nice Ram backpack, which is really nice. That is, that's uh, got a lot of zippers. Yeah, but you know, what, what we tend to do with this stuff is we tend to give it away. Uh, yes. Because we want to make sure that you understand that we're not <laughs> influenced. We, we can't keep yeah, we can't something keep. like this. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's very nice of you, Jim, but at the same time, you know, let's, uh, let's share in the wealth with um, our... The viewers. Uh, and readers. With our viewers, yeah. yeah so, with you guys. So uh, let's see what's in here. You, you want to see what's in here? Andrew? Yeah, please. Okay. It's, it looks full. It's absolutely full. Look, we have a... What uh, is that? Uh, that is a mug, I think. It's it's a mug. It's a Ram mug. It's a, it's a top tumbler. It's a tumbler. It's one of those, yeah. Built to serve. Yeah. Ram, that's really cool. Really solid. There's a couple of those in here. Oh, we've got some shirts, Andre. Wow, that's really cool. we got some Ram shirts. Whoa, look at those. Wow, those are high-end. Those are really nice shirts. With the Ram right? logo? Yeah, with the Ram logo. And on the back and the front. And the front. Uh, and we've got, uh, look at this dude, we've got some, uh, those S colors won't run, dude. Speaking of hats. Yeah, Ram uh, hats. Yes. So this is, this is going to be a big Ram show for all you Ram fans. And usually what we've done in the past with, with, with this stuff, and we'll do it again, is if you guys uh, get one of our uh, hats, right? 
It's for 50 bucks. So 50 you guys bucks. can always support us using Super yeah. Chat. Yeah, to support uh, us. Carlos just donated five bucks. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. So, Carlos, um, you're going to be on the board. I'm yep. going to write your name on the board for five bucks. For 10 bucks, it's a sticker. Yep. For 20. CFL truck. Yep. Uh, 25 bucks, it's a patch. Yep. We have jackets yep. with patches and, and stuff. And then for 50 bucks, what we'll do is if you get one of the TFL hats, yes. we'll, we'll throw in one of the uh, Ram hats as well. Attach it to it. Yeah, attach to it. So you get two for one, basically. Yeah. You get this Ram hat and or which you want, whatever one you want. So you guys pick. Um, and then you get one of our hats. Yes. Fair enough. And we'll be doing this, uh, thank you, Jim, probably for the next few episodes. Because tomorrow, we're going to do a big talking Talking truck trucks episode. with Mr. Truck. With Mr. Truck, yeah. Yes. So thank you guys, uh, and that's the that's the dealio there. So uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. So Carlos, I'm gonna put your name down here. Thank you very much, Carlos. All right, let's keep answering some questions. Um, hey, Vince Clark just donated uh, thirteen ninety nine Canadian. Thank you, Dude, Vince. Vince has been supporting us in a big way. Look at this, three shows in a row. Vince, Vince has been there. Really? How much? Well, that's twenty one plus six. That's almost fifty bucks right, right there. All right, so plus well, thirteen he's, today. He's getting, he's getting there. You're yeah. getting there, dude. Yeah, you're getting there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so um, I just had a scary thing happen to me, Andrew. Oh no! Yeah, very scary. What? So I was driving uh, the new Ranger yes. down Loveland Pass. One of these? Yeah. Today I was riding, driving down when it was snowy and icy, and I'm getting to the bottom right by Loveland Ski Area, and. Uh, I'm following Tommy. Is it, what's the weather like? It's snowy and icy. Okay. And I hit my brake, and next thing you know, I'm going sideways down the road. Sideways. I was going sideways. Okay. All I did was hit the brake. You know, it's crazy because you expect like bad things to happen, and you, you know, like music to come up. It doesn't. It's just like one minute you're driving, next minute you're, you're hit the brake, and now I'm going sideways into the oncoming traffic. Okay. Down the thing. So I steered into the skid. Okay. You uh, kind of let go of the brakes. Uh, yeah. I steered to, into it. I steered up, and now I'm going, you know, down the road. <laughs> on the side of the road. Okay. And the only thing that saved my ass was that there was no car or truck coming up. But yeah, it was. So scary. you got straightened out. And I got kind straightened of out, and then I was slowed down. Then okay. I was going to come back and go back in my lane. But I was literally going sideways down. And this is with all terrain tires. This is with all terrain tires. In a four wheel drive truck. Yeah, and you forget just how important it is to have weight on the back. And Tommy was in our long term Subaru, and he didn't have any issues. Hmm. Uh, and I think it does have to do with the fact that the truck has weight no, balance. no weight. So I think when I hit the brake, the, the back wheels locked up just for a split second. The next thing you know, I was going sideways down the road. It was terrifying. You put, need to put some sandbags in there. I, I need to change my pants. <laughs> That's what I needed to do. Yeah, the brown yeah. moment? Yeah, I know. It was a more yellow moment. <laughs> All right, let's, let's answer the next question. This is a truck question from okay. Chris. Okay. So Chris, is a, this is an interesting question, too. Uh, he's buy, uh, try, planning a, to buy a new pickup truck. Next couple of years, though, huge Ram fan, Power Wagon and Rebel are on Chris's list, but also a Tundra TRD Pro. He would like a four-wheel drive truck for hunting, occasionally going mudding. And also, he's got two kids, so he wants a lot of big, big truck with lots of power and a reliable truck. And then he says, I know the Tundra is 51K, the Rebel True. I want is around 53K, and the Power Wagon with some options is 60K. So I would say, Chris, and I wrote back to Chris, because I actually, thank you, Adam, for donating. Adam, that. uh, that's... Um, that's five pounds. Dude. Pounds. Yeah, dude, thank so you. So I, I cannot do a conversion in my head, but thank you. Thank you, Adam, that's very kind. Yeah, we love our British fans. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's, he's looking at a Tundra, a Rebel for 53, a Tundra 51, or a Power Wagon. And I wrote, and I said, Chris... Get what your heart desires, which is a power wagon. And I was just over at our Ram dealership, yes. and power wagons were being discounted. I'm not joking, by at least $10,000. So right now, though. Right now. Because, because in about a few months, maybe March, April, May. Or a few days. <laughs> a new Ram comes out, yes. right? And the next generation, actually an update to the Ram heavy-duty line. Yep. And they're going to have a new power wagon. We saw images of one of our prototype, yep. which is on TFL Trucks' website as well, and uh, TFL Truck Channel. So, so the right now is a good time, right? Uh, at the end of the year or at the end of the cycle of the truck, really good time to get discounts. So on you, you can get the power wagon for I think under four fifty or, or, or less, less, maybe or less actually, yeah, because they're, they're really trying to discount them. And the reason I said a couple days is because obviously end of the year dealers want to close out their inventory. Yes, it's, and you don't know, you know, what kind of incentives they have right now, but I think they're strong. You know, Ken just got his truck at zero percent interest, which is incredible for seventy two months. Right. So yeah, I'd say go for the uh, power wagon because you know what, Andre. Power wagon don't care. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's what Nathan said. That's what Nathan would right. say. <laughs> right. Uh, 
the TRD Pro, actually, we, we've just done a video with that truck. Yep. Uh, so we're testing, we're doing more testing. 2019 Gold Winch is here, so we're doing some off-roading. Rebel, we, we have a long-term Rebel. We do. So, but I think I like where you're going. Go with your heart. Also on that Ranger versus Cherokee. Yep. Go with your heart. You know, if you want a truck, get a truck. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, go, right? go, with, go with your heart, not with your brain. And, you know, if that means you're getting divorced, so, so be it. <laughs> so, I hope, hopefully not, no, no wives are watching so, this. So, uh, Andre, with 2019 coming up, we have a brand new show that we're producing, and we need your help. Yep. So, I'm going to put the shout out right now. We're going to do a show called um, Dude, I Love Slash Hate My New Car or Truck. Okay. And basically, what we're going to try to do is we're going to find people who have just bought new cars and trucks and profile them. We want to know what your buying experience has been like, what vehicles you looked at when you cross shop. Uh, how much you paid, we want to know that. And we want somebody who's bought a new car or truck in the last three to four months. So what we'll do is we'll... Not the day before. <laughs> not the day before, because right. that, that's going to be honeymoon. We, we, want, right. we want to know, you know, like, you know, after you've lived with it for a while, and whether you are happy or bad or not, or, you know, you've got what you wanted or didn't. And we're hoping to do this as a service to all of your viewers, so that, you know, we review cars, but now you're going to get, like, you know, the straight dope from people who've actually put out money. And lots of knowledge with six, several months yeah. of experience. Yeah, so if you're in the Denver area and you've recently purchased a new car or truck, we'd love to have you in our studio. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to do a walk around of your new vehicle. And we'd love to have you answer these questions as a service to all the other viewers out there who want to know whether that's a good or bad vehicle to purchase. So uh, where should they email us, Andre? Ask at tfltruck.com. All of us are on that alias, yeah. so we'll, we'll see that. So that's just just one email. Let's not give up uh, uh, right, that's several it. emails. Yeah, make it, yeah. Ask at tfltruck.com. Yeah, and by the way, do you like my new Christmas hat? Dude, you look like a trucker, really. It's, you know, it, this is like a cool boarding <laughs> slash hat from Tahoe, uh -huh. but I think it fits. Yes, yeah. well, especially with your shirt. Yeah, you big know, truck. You just, you just look tough. Yeah, and by the way, Joy's cleaning lady says, uh, did you steal that from uh, uh, Mr. Truck's <laughs> closet? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, this was a Christmas present, not from Mr. Truck, from my dad. So, All right, next so question. Thank you. Evan says, I have a quick question for you. We are looking to update my sister's 2004 Pontiac G6 GT. Oh, my goodness. To a 2011 through 2016 vehicle. What are your thoughts on the Chevy Cruze from that time period? Uh, I say get a Chevy Cobalt SS <laughs> supercharged. That's what his dad, that's what Andre's dad has. My dad has, has one. one of those, yeah. And, so, and your dad assaults you somebody, right? Hey, he will actually sell it to it's you. It's yellow. It's yellow, it's a two-door. <laughs> Fast and it's fun, and you it's, don't have to shift, right? It's, it's hella gears. It's hella fun. No, it's a six-speed manual, actually. So, so no, I'm I'm kidding, but I think the Cobalt SS is, was basically a Chevy Cruze, but it's a heck of a lot of fun with with the SS Sport package. I say, you know, if I were to get a Cruze, I'd say go for the diesel Cruze. I think that was a really interesting vehicle that got really fuel, really good fuel economy, and, and not many know, people know about not it. Not many actually. know about it. It right. does fall in that time, you know. And the cruise was, um, you know, it was an okay, it was it's, an okay it's, mid-size, mid-size you know, runabout. it's dying. Yeah, it's cruise dying. is actually know, it's dying. Going, it's going away. It's going away after 2019 yeah. because GM is killing several cars. But, but I, I thought that the diesel was interesting because it was something that was completely unusual. You know, there aren't many diesel out there really. And I think the diesel was uh, from Europe and so they actually did a good job. I think they spent a lot of money actually getting it here. Uh, somebody's saying don't buy GM quality has been down fall for years. Obviously, that's a blanket statement that I don't think applies to right. all GM vehicles. It's a blanket statement. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'd go for the cruise and I'd go for the diesel. That would be my recommendation. Or SS, Cobalt. Yeah. Hey, uh, Brian J. wants to know, when do you guys think that everything will switch over to electric? You know, in America, when the pendulum swings, it swings fast and hard. Swing high. So you, you, what, what ends up happening here is you've got, you know, a little bit of electric and then a little bit more, and then all of a sudden, boom, <clears> it's all electric. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go out and say within the next 10 years, we're going to see a lot of electric cars. Not, you know, right now it's less than 1%. You know that. It's less than 1%. Well, right. Even counting like plug-ins. Yeah. Uh, uh, plug-in yeah. hybrids or yeah. hybrids. I'm thinking it's going to be EVs maybe 10% by... Ten years from now, or so maybe more. Maybe manufacturers are investing in this, right? Yeah. VW is, is right. you know, is pointing towards electrification. Many other manufacturers, and then now electric trucks, yep. you know, supposedly coming out within the next two years. But I agree with you; it's not going to happen next year. No, it's not going to happen in twenty twenty. The infrastructure isn't there yet. No, 
even though it's being built out, it's, it's still, still not, not high enough yeah. to where, especially for people like us in the West, where distances are big, yeah. you know, you have to drive long, long ways. So I, I, I had something yeah. terrifying happen to me. And it again? Turned, yeah, and again, it's really changed my way of thinking about electric vehicles. So I kind of, you know, there was a story that came out today that uh, in Norway, uh, guess what drivers of what cars get the most speeding tickets? By far. Are you going to say electric? Yes, but what kind? What, Tesla? Yes, yes. Okay. The story today was that by far, Tesla drivers get the more, most speeding tickets, more than Porsche drivers, more than any other brand, because they love the fast, immediate acceleration of instant torque. Well, there's another reason for this. Yeah. It's the quietness, right? Electric cars are built quieter yeah, sure. because you're not hearing the engine. So all of a sudden, you look down, and you're going at speeds exceeding anything you imagine. Yeah, someone's asking, so when will you see the CFL Electric Channel? You know, we're still, <laughs> we're still trying, to, trying to get TFL off, road, off, off the, the ground. ground. Yeah. By the way, we have a Roku channel, too. Yeah, we do have a Roku so channel. So tell your, tell your friends, uh, Roku. Uh, by the way, <laughs> check it, by the way, <laughs> uh, Steve, who runs our off-road channel, yes. did the craziest video, Andre. I watched this thing. I was I was staggered. So he took a TRD Pro Four Runner right. and took it up uh, what he likes to call Hydroline, <laughs> right. which is basically this mud bog under a power line, except that but it's frozen. It's completely frozen, and the thing fell through the ice. And the whole video is him trying to plow through it. And I was terrified <laughs> that he was just going to tear the guts out of that TRD Pro yeah. Four Runner. You got to watch the video. We're going to put it up. I think on Friday. Is it Friday morning? Yeah, Friday morning. TFL Car Channel. On TFL Car, uh, it's probably one of the craziest videos we did, and it, it was it was a hard decision to to whether we should put it up because a guy who used to work for us, Dave Erickson, right? He's got his own channel now. Every man. Uh, Let's not talk about that. Well, he's got his own channel. Okay. Anyway, he he did the same thing with a very similar, actually the same vehicle, and did like serious damage to it right so i was really worried about this video because i thought you know we're going to go down that same road but you got to watch it to see what happens it's a great video uh it's a torture test and it's one of the more exciting videos we've done and then tomorrow the truck came out yeah on top tomorrow ian is busy finishing the touches on this video what did, what did you do well it's really exciting i thought i told you guys we have a ranger in in the office uh, we actually drove it here from california and that's a whole other video but tomorrow it's tacoma versus ranger on Goldmine Hill, yeah. but it's an icy and snowy Goldmine Hill, so you're gonna have to watch that tomorrow on TFL Truck. Uh, we we also did had no damage, good, thankfully. That's good. But it's always sketchy because when you're going up icy slopes, you can slide off roading, you, you can slide back. Bigger tree. You basically become a passenger once again, and no control. And but we had none of that, but we still tested both trucks. So Andre, what happened to me that was terrifying and kind of changed the way I look at electric cars, right? That's, that's how we started this conversation. I was in uh, California, yes. uh, in Venice Beach, and I decided to run scooters, electric scooters. You know, you know the yeah, kind, yeah, the yeah. bird, you know, the ones that are super popular now, yes. right? Razor does. They're on every corner, yeah. usually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I think Lime is one. Yeah. And they had like four different companies, and we rented like two different companies. And I love scootering. It's fun, especially long... Uh, in Santa Monica, the beach, right? Like the there's, beach that, there's that, there's sidewalk? that, like, it's like I a mean, sidewalk uh, in the sand. It's right. Yeah, it's really fun. We get on the scooters. You know how fast it went? 10 miles an hour? Five miles an hour. Those scooters are capable of 18 miles an hour. They went five miles an hour, which is about a, a, a hair faster than you can walk. <laughs> right. And a scooter at five miles an hour is boring as beep. Okay. It really is. It's just boring and no fun and stupid, and you just want to throw it into the ocean. So we're scootering along. We're really bored. And then, you know, on your app, it shows you kind of, where you're at and then there's this big orange zone that says safety zone you know restricted speed okay so the second we got to venice beach which is i guess a different county right all of a sudden that that, that governor went well, off it was, it was zoned yeah it was zoned and we could go 18 miles an hour or however fast a scooter could go okay so we went from you know five miles an hour to full power at 18 and it became fun now the reason that was terrifying is because you can see where that's going you know where that is going well autonomy and control, basically. You know, you know, right. you know that like what's going to happen with electric autonomous cars is municipalities, big cities are going to limit how fast you can go, and that speed is going to be freaking slow. Like you're going to, you're going to, you know, what's going to happen is you're going to pull into L LA or New York or Chicago, pick mm -hmm. the city, London if you're from the UK, and you're going to be limited to some crazy ass slow ass speed, and it's going to be boring as it's going to be like being basically on a bus except that you're you know with your friends on a bus right and but you will have no control and but will you care if it's totally autonomous yeah it sucked 
Okay. It sucked. It was just no fun. It was just like I'm I'm here, you know, what 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 ends up happening is you lose the interesting and fun part of driving. It just becomes an appliance and you're just being transported from one place to the next. Um, that is a danger. And, well, yeah, and, it, and it and it just absolutely sucks because you're looking forward to like, you know, controlling, you know, there's I mean the great thing about Horses. But commuting and controlling are two different things. No, they're not. Like, they're, you, let's you say you want to go to work and you just want to get there. Uh, you were having fun. You, you, you were trying to have fun. No, no, it's not because I, I, I thought about that. So let's say you, you want to get to work, but your kids had a meltdown and you're late. Right. And now you want to control and you want to go faster. Realistically, you probably can't, but you could like pick your way and you, you, you've got a route or something. Right. It's like being on an airplane. Why, you know, why people hate airplanes is because they completely give up control. And you're just stuck there, and you're stuck there, and you know things break. I was there last week. And, and this is what's going to exactly yeah. what's going to happen with electric cars. You're going to be late for work, and you're going to get into that car, and it's going to say it's going to take you exactly 35 minutes, and not a minute faster, and you're not going to be able to control or change it whatsoever, and it's going to be absolutely sucky. Wow, you're painting a really uh, yeah, no, no, sour picture. It's there. going to be it's going to be no good, guys. And, you know, enjoy electric cars while they're still... <laughs> so we're not starting a TFL electric channel, if you're wondering. Or TFL green channel. Somebody was suggesting TFL green. We're going to be talking about all those vehicles, right? But, yeah. but on our car, truck, or hey, now why channels. Why don't you show them what's in this box? Hey, guys. So we got this as well. So we have Toyota cookies. Look at this. Toyota. But also, this is really interesting, Supra. Yum. Supra is coming in Detroit, 2019 Detroit Auto Show, North American show, in early January. We're going to be there. Yep. Uh, Supra is coming out, and this cookie is broken, by the way. Yeah, it is broken. Did you break it? No, it just oh, came that oh, way. Okay. What's the other cookie in there? There's more. Toyota, Toyota, Supra, and Supra. So we have two Supras. Wow. So this is, thank you, Toyota. Thank you for sending this. That's this so is cool. really, really special. Yeah. And um, love. Hope cookies. Love, hope, hope cookies. cookies. Yeah. So this is really, really cool. Thank you, you so know, much. These, these are too cool to eat, right? Well, so, how can you eat them? Yes. Yeah, I mean, imagine if you buy one of the first Supras and you can <laughs> get your own Is there a VIN number on that cookie? <laughs> you can get your no. own cookie with it. Okay. <laughs> you know, I love that sometimes we go to these events, like when the, when the uh, C7 Cor Corvette was launched. Yeah. You know, we got the little emblem yeah. with a VIN number or the serial number of that little um, stingray. Yeah, you, know, let me, you know what we should do, too? We have a whole bunch of press kits in, in, the, in the office. Yeah, we do. That we get these really cool press kits that come with when a new car is launched. And I think if you bought that new car, you would love to have that press kit because it's, you know, it's usually a really nice box and it's got some, some sort of, of a drive inside of it. it. And, yeah, and it's got like, uh, dri you mean like thumb drive. Thumb drive and yeah. it's got, you know, booklet. So maybe we'll give those out too. That way we could, you know, we, we, we're, we're collecting them, but we'd love to give them to you guys. And if you have that vehicle to actually have the press kit for it, it would be way cool. I know I would love to have that if I had brand new vehicle. Yeah, and we have them from several years back. Yeah. The so. scary part was when we were in Detroit a couple of years ago when the new C7 Corvette came yes. out, those were all individually numbered. Stingray emblems. Yeah, there's like a big sting, like right. a metal stingray right. emblem. Right. Right, and, and the, the, the people were selling them on eBay. And they were journalists selling them. I yes. thought that was just really sad. That, that's crazy. Yeah, the sell, you know, and people were getting like fifteen hundred dollars for it. I'm like, you know, we're in the business of reporting news, not selling press kits. <laughs> that's just absolutely crazy, dude. It is crazy. All right, should we um, answer Cameron's question? Cameron, hello, Cameron. This is a truck question. <laughs> this is an interesting one. My current vehicle is a 2006 Chevy Trailblazer with 182,000 miles which I used to go to work. It's fine, it tells a 5,000 pound boat trailer. My trailer, um, so he wants to upgrade. He found a 2012 Suburban with also around 180,000 miles. And basically the question is, should, I, should Cameron switch old Trailblazer into a Suburban? He wants a bigger vehicle. How long will a Suburban last? Uh, <laughs> it depends. 180,000 miles. <laughs> no, it'll okay. last, okay. you know, once again, uh, Couple like questions. Raisin or chocolate chip? It, it depends on who had it, how it was taken care of, where it was. I promise you, if it was from Chicago, 180,000 miles. Because Chicago uses, a, that's where I grew up. Rust. Used, yeah, they use a lot of uh, salt in the winter, and vehicles just rust out. If it's an Arizona car or maybe a SoCal car, you know, it's going to last a lot longer. Well, a couple of things. First of all, um, people are asking about Ken's truck. Yeah. 
Kent is coming to a show tomorrow, so 4 p.m. Mountain Time. Kent will be here for Chuck Show. He, he's got an F-150. He'll tell you all he about... He doesn't have his cool hat, dude. He doesn't have the hat, no. but he's got his own cowboy hat. Uh, but he'll tell you everything about his truck tomorrow. I have an answer for this. First of all, follow your heart. This is a theme today, yeah, yeah. right? Follow your heart hey, because... Bug Guy just gave us 20. Thank Ooh. you, Bud. Well, but thank you. Thank bug you, Guy, bud. 20 bucks. So let me put you on... So you're saying follow your heart? Ask at tfltruck.com for a sticker, please. E email us your address to send it to. Um, it sounds like he already found a Suburban. Right. So first of all, if this Suburban checks out and it looks good, it has good history, and you checked everything, the records, the maintenance, just, just get it. He said yeah. it was uh, regularly maintained and it's being sold at a reputable dealer. Yeah, so he, he sounds like his heart wants a Suburban. Yeah. So follow it. But, but then the so question about how many miles will it last, so can I, we don't know. So can I give you my rules? What? All right, so a couple rules. I'll help you when buying a new vehicle. I have a couple rules. Uh, first rule is if I can buy a car under 100,000 miles, um, I will do that. Unless it's like a Land Cruiser where... The car is designed to go 300,000 miles. I think at 100,000 miles or under, uh, there's still a lot of life left in it. Once you start getting over 100,000 miles, then you have to start replacing big ticket items, right? Like exhaust systems, starters. Chains, timing, timing belts. belts. Water pumps. And if those repairs aren't done, then bad things happen. And they can go a long time without getting done. So, you know, at, at that level... You need somebody who, who is taking care of it. So yes, if you've got the service records, but in general, you can find vehicles that are under 100,000 miles. Two, I, I keep away from dealers if I can. I like I like a private I like private owners. I know it's a bigger pain in the butt, but there's usually at least a couple grand uh, premium from buying from a dealer because they have to pay for obviously their lot and their land and their overhead. Advertising everything. Everything. So you're gonna pay a lot more if you can find a one owner vehicle. You know, I love that. That's all the fun Craigslist. And right. I see one owner vehicle. I'm on it right away. The other question I asked immediately is, um, how long have you owned it? And if the answer is six months, I run far and I run fast. Mm -hmm. There's a reason they're probably getting rid of it. You know, uh, they won't tell you that yeah. reason, right. <laughs> but you'll figure it out, and it'll be expensive. Right. Yeah, I bought it for a family member. They don't like it. I'm selling it. Right. Whatever. Right. Whatever. That's just an excuse. Right. Uh, and I've gotten burned because of all those reasons. So like when we bought the old XJ, right? The guy had just bought it and had never actually got plates for it. And he said because his wife or his girlfriend at the time was worried about um, having a baby in the back of a Jeep Wrangler. Jeep, okay. Right, which makes sense. Okay, sure. But the real reason was when we took it in. No cat? There was a cat, but there was nothing in the cat. Yeah. Right? Okay. So he didn't want to go to the $600 expense on a $5,000 vehicle of replacing the cat. Uh, and so, you know, I, 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 I worry about any vehicle that's over a hundred thousand miles and I like to I like to find vehicles and, and it's worth paying the extra for the low miles mm -hmm. because in the long run it's a cheaper maintenance uh, equation than if you pay less for more miles so the I most expensive vehicle you can buy is, is like vehicle. is the cheapest vehicle yeah. you can buy because you'll be fixing it but the thing about I understand about the suburban and the Tahoe for that matter or the GMC cousins is they're highly desirable so yeah. they're usually expensive yeah but at the same time there the parts are cheap so that's a good thing right the parts are cheap there's thousands and thousands of those suburbans running around those engines are fairly reliable the v8 engines um, so you have to weigh those like you said yeah. and get as low miles as possible for your budget because he, he probably has a budget yeah, i don't know what the budget is but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. But follow your heart. Find that really nice Suburban. Okay. All right. Uh, Andre, Will asks, I have a 2015 Subaru Forester okay. that I paid off. It has 27,000 miles. That's a good job, Will. You paid that off really quick. Yes. I'm really intrigued by the 2019 Honda Passport, which is just debuted in mm. L.A., right? We were there for the Yeah, I was there. Uh, what things should I consider moving from the Forester to the Passport? And under what circumstance would it be a good idea to make a change like this? And I would say you're going from, you know, a relatively medium-sized vehicle to a big vehicle. A bigger mid-sized vehicle, <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, first of all, we haven't driven the Passport yet. No, but we will. We will. Yes. Um, in January, right? Yeah. At the end of January, we'll be uh, having a full review of the Passport. Basically, what it is is slightly shrunken pilot. Yep. So, the front looks very similar to a pilot, but it's also taller. Uh, so it's more like adventure ready, a little bit more off-road ready. We don't know yet exactly how it drives. A couple you, things I can say about it. It's going to have the uh, Acura terrain management system. I mean the Honda and Acura terrain management yes. system, which is actually really good. 
And we tested it in yeah. sand, and we the, tested it in dirt, and it works VTM4 really well. VTM4 is their all-wheel drive system yeah. also, which is also a very good system. If you put good tires on this yeah. vehicle, we have a picture right there. It could be really, really good off-road, but you you paid off your Forester. Why? why? Maybe he's bored. He's bored with a Forester. I okay. get bored after that. After three years? Uh, After 7,000 miles, let alone 27,000 miles. Uh, so Honda Passport, we'll have a review for you. It seems like a good vehicle because it's bigger, like you said, yeah. but it's a five-passenger vehicle, not a seven. Not a seven-passenger. Uh, Mario wants to know if Taylor's coming back with an FJ. We have no word on a new FJ. I mean, I think right now the 4Runner has become Toyota's kind of FJ. Uh, and 4Runners are really good. Uh, and I and they haven't been redesigned. They haven't been redesigned. <laughs> right. But, you know, I was coming into Boulder today from the mountains, and I was amazed at how many new forerunners are out there. And I think that's especially like, in Colorado, you yeah, can really see that. Yeah, it's got right. a, it's got an old four liter engine, but it's a uh, reliable. It's you know thirsty, but at the same time, it's pretty badass looking. So I don't see. I know people are curious whether the Bronco will have a real competitor. We thought maybe the Blazer would be that. Didn't it's happen. Not. Didn't happen. So as far as we know, the only real. Bronco competitor is Wrangler, the, is a Wrangler and the Bronco potentially and the Forerunner and the Forerunner. Right, Forerunner right. I, mean, I mean, I know it's out there, but imagine if the Forerunner didn't exist and we said, "Hey, there's a new Toyota coming that's body on frame, that's got a four-liter straight si uh, V6, you know, that has uh, a lockable rear differential, big tires, big tires, and there's a and new, square looking, and there's square looking, and then there's a roof rack that comes on the TRD Pro version. You guys would be all over it, right? Yes. So people want what they can't have necessarily, but what you can have is really good. <laughs> so, so and reliable. Yeah, and so the right. answer is, I'm not sure the FJ is was half as good the, the last FJ as the current Forerunner, right? The last, the coolest thing about the FJ was it had three wipers. And like the styling, the styling, awesome. yeah. But it was also hard to see out of. It was, it was like, it was, yeah, it was like. <laughs> it was like driving in a coffin, in a Hummer. Yeah, to some and, and those those suicide doors were horrible because if you were in the back seat, you had to wait for the person in the front seat to open the door so they could basically keep you locked in the back of it. And I loved that vehicle, but it was not practical. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, unless you've got. Both load of money, I think you're going to want something that you can both take to work and take off road. And the FJ had a lot of compromises. Yeah, and you want to bring your family with you. Uh, w some news about the Blazer, we're driving it in January. Yes. So there's an event at um, like 20th, 22nd of January. So we'll be having a full review. But the new Blazer is actually a crossover, which is sport oriented. It's wide, it's slow. It's, it's really road work, you know, road focused instead of off road focused like we hoped. So that's a unique thing. And um, somebody's asking about the Nissan SUV, the answer to the Bronco. Yeah, what? a used Xterra. Yeah, a used <laughs> Xterra is pretty awesome. I just saw like a 2017 on the road. It was really, really cool. Yeah, go get yourself one of those. But you know how Nissan usually goes between Pathfinder unibody frame, yeah. unibody frame? We're waiting for the next frame. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know no? Nissan uh, had this incredible off-road worthy vehicle, right? The Xterra. Yes. And it had this incredible aftermarket community built around it. People and fan were, base. Right. Fan base, people. And I don't know why they walked away from it. You know, with Wrangler selling 20,000 units a month, they would be selling at least half that if they, if they redesigned it. Probably. Yeah, I, I'm just uh, heartbroken about that. And there's a patrol in Europe. You know, there's a lot of cool Nissan products. I'd love to see something, and I think what happened was, uh, the the industry got scared when fuel went up to four or five dollars a gallon. Remember that? Right. And, and they have to plan five years in advance. Yeah, and they right? planned so. for, for for expensive fuel, and now we're at fuel at under two dollars a gallon, and, and, these, nobody, and, and everybody people, wants bigger and yeah, more macho, off road worthy, and big right. tires, and yeah, Nissan doesn't have it right now. And the Patrol, we kind of have the Armada, which is our version of the Patrol, but the, but the Armada is way big. Yeah. I mean, it's a great truck, big SUV, but it's so humongous. If you don't need the vehicle that big, you need something smaller. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a good question. I, I would say uh, let's stay tuned for what the, what the Passport does. You know, right now it looks like a slightly more off-road version of a Pilot with a little bit more character. I don't think it's going to have the same ground clearance. You know, most Subarus have 8.7 inches of ground clearance. I'm not sure that the Passport has that, and at the end of the day, if you're really looking to go off-road, uh, it probably won't no, I, have that, well, but it well, may not matter to you. That, Zach. I, I it's think about it's an inch about taller than a Pilot, or it has an inch more ground clearance than a Pilot, yeah, but so it's I not think on it's the same level nines. of the So actually, it should have pretty good ground clearance. We'll, there you go. We'll get you the exact numbers in January when we test drive it. 
Uh, but where was I going with this? Oh, oh, you know what I was hoping for the passport? Right. I was really hop hoping for a box on wheels. Yeah. You know, we, we didn't get it, no. but, but, but it's more, you know, it's more styled like a pilot would be and the ridge line would be. But, you know, they mentioned in their press releases that it's rugged, classical. So I was, you know, these images of a box, you know, a boxy vehicle came to my mind, but it's not boxy. So uh, Sasha wants to know, are we going to get a Ram 45 or 5500 pickup soon? Stay tuned on this, because uh, Ram, Ram Heavy Duties are coming out in January at the Detroit Auto Show. Yep. There'll be more news, and my bet is yes, 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 because that's where the market is going. Yes. Because the Chevrolet just unveiled or selling the 5500 yep. Silverado, so the market is heading there. Ford has had their 450, 550 trucks for forever, so yes, I think Ram will have updated heavier trucks. We, d we just, we'll learn more about it Mar next year. Maria Moran Miranda is asking, should we bring him back to Stepside? No word on that, but we have some word on <laughs> the uh, Trail Boss Heavy Duty, right? Right, and but the word, has a step. And the word is, <laughs> there won't be a Heavy Duty, so, as far as we know, Trail Boss. I published a story a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, that we there was a prototype of a Chevy Heavy Duty truck, that, which was really tall. Yeah. So I took my liberty to kind of, you know, rumor a little bit and saying is that could that be really a, the trail bus heavy duty and now we're hearing a report from gm authority that the answer is no yep. we're not going to have a trail bus heavy duty but the z71 package will still be there obviously for heavy duty trucks. So, so da is saying i'm looking to get rid of my j king get a tacoma four cylinder four by four is this a good truck the truck is good the engine is not good uh the four by four uh four cylinder tacoma gets almost identical fuel economy almost to that this. little engine has to work, to work really yeah, hard to the six cylinder and it doesn't cost a lot less no. so you're going to get really bad fuel economy no you power no power <laughs> and a truck that nobody's going to buy because <laughs> nobody wants it's really basically like it's a, a, it's a work truck. fleet truck it's a fleet like truck, a, yeah. like a worker truck so, so i understand you maybe want to save some money but i think the comas have such great resale value that you're better off getting the six cylinder and getting like a sport, right? If you, you don't have to buy a pro, right? You don't have to buy right, a pro. You, right. can, you can get a sport, any, any and, and it'll, it'll do fine. Right. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't get that uh, four cylinder. It's not a great engine. It doesn't. There's no, like you said, Andre. You have to, it works so hard that, that the upside of good fuel economy isn't there. So why get it? Ram Dakota, we don't have any news. They said uh, midsize truck for FCA is coming before 2022. Yep. We know that. We don't know if it's going to be called Dakota. We don't know anything about it. The thing we know is that there's a rumor out there that the uh, Jeep um, will be based, the Dakota will be based on the Jeep? No, 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 no. The, the full-size Jeep SUV. The well, Chinese like the Grand Wagoneer? Yeah. Oh, well, there's another news about the Commander. The Commander, yeah. So there's a, there's a Commander in China. In China. Which is a, a three-row. A big, like a big Grand Cherokee, like basically. a big Grand Cherokee, right. like a three-row, and that there's a rumor out now that's been reported a lot that that's going to come to uh, FCA via as, the Chrysler. As a Chrysler, exactly. So we're going to get a, a Jeep Commander S as a Chrysler. Tuned. This is not official from Chrysler. This right? is not, but Chrysler needs something because right now they only have really like a handful of cars, and the only one that really sells is the Pacifica. Well, less than a handful. Yeah, <laughs> they have a minivan and a sedan. Yeah. So Racer X's. I like the four cylinder taco. Uh, Diesel Ranger, Michael Brenner wants to know, um, no, what? no, no, Diesel Ranger is not going to happen. Oh, I'm no. saying it's not going to happen. No, you know what, uh, I'll actually put money on, right. a uh, hybrid Ranger before a Diesel Ranger. I would too, yeah, and I would, I would also put a Ranger Raptor before a Diesel Ranger. <laughs> right. I think even though Ford has officially said they're not bringing the Ranger Raptor, I think two years from now we're going to see one. Yeah, we don't know what what it will be, what will be. And we still want to go test drive one, but gosh, it's far to go to Australia. It's At least far. Australia, maybe Thailand. Maybe Thailand, uh, maybe the UK next year. It's far. The reason why I say a hybrid Ranger, yeah. you know the reason for this, right? Yes. Because the 2020 Aviator Lincoln will have a plug-in hybrid, which is a sandwich between the 10-speed automatic and their engine. So I'm thinking Ford may use that modular system to power other vehicles, so that's going to be interesting. So uh, uh, here's an interesting question. Andrew says Rolls Royce four x four concept. Uh, you know, what? I think Rolls Royce the is Cullinan? Yeah, it's kind of late to that game. So they sold those out, but I've heard that you know the first luxury four x four from like a bespoke premium brand was Bentley, right? The Bentayga. Remember mm -hmm. the Bentayga? Yeah, yeah. I went and drove that, and uh, now they're discounting them. So they're I think that this, popular. I think, no, they, they, I mean, they were or popular is there the like first year. Limelight? And I think, I think people have like gotten over these expensive, 
uh, crossovers. So obviously the Bentayga was first, right? And then Jaguar kind of did theirs, but yes. that was not so expensive, no. right? And then no, the Lamborghini is out. The Lamborghini is out, right. the, the Urus, and yes. now of course the, the, the Rolls Royce is out. They said they sure. sold out like first six months of it. But I'm kind of, I kind of feel like that expensive, super expensive premium SUV craze has run its course, or it is running its course. And I say that because, like I said, the Ventegas are getting discounted. But maybe there has to be more turnover, right? You need to redesign the Bentayga to be something else in order to, because it's like when you're in that neighborhood and you ask your neighbor, what are you driving? And you're saying Bentayga. I'm like, oh, wait, it was last year's news. I no, really, it's, it's, there has to be turnover there. I'm going to be in uh, California uh, next week. Yes. And I really tried to get into Urus to drive it. Okay. And they said no. They said they're not available for TFL. So sorry, guys. Lamborghini doesn't <laughs> care we about tried. you. We, we, we tried. We wanted you to have one. But instead, I called this dude who's selling his SEMA 6x6 Jeep Hellcat-powered Wrangler. Okay. So what did he say? I don't know. I left him a bad <laughs> voicemail with a bunch of different phone numbers because I never call myself. But hopefully, I can get him to actually uh, call me back and we'll okay. do a video on that. How would you love to see a 6x6 Hellcat-powered uh, Jeep Wrangler? That could replace the Mantega. Yes, <laughs> it's, but he's asking, he's selling it. He built it for CMI, he's yes. asking, I think, 268000 for it. That's which, is the same, which is the same as the Mantega, yeah. <laughs> okay. Is the Frontier going to get a refresh? We don't know. We don't know. It's probably coming soon. we got to... We gotta close this show, huh? Yeah, uh, we're uh, getting the wrap up sig time. <laughs> signal. <laughs> so, guys, thank you once again for joining us, especially during this week between vacations. Yes. We really appreciate all your support. Um, please go to TFL Truck tomorrow and check out Andre and Nathan's uh, Tacoma Ranger versus Ranger. versus Ranger Goldmine Hill, which uh, I heard is going to be a great video. So, uh, if Ian gets done editing it, we'll upload it and publish it at 5 a.m. MST tomorrow. And then you got to check out the. Uh, on Friday. Uh, you watched it, right? Was yes. It it's insane, guys. It's insane. It's yeah. worth a watch. It's worth it's worth a watch. You know, Stephen has outdone himself. Yeah, we usually do. You know, a lot of videos, and that one uh, was really, um, you know, really, really unique. So I think you'll enjoy it. And then the last thing I want to say: somebody was asking about us starting an EV channel. Mm -hmm. I think in 2019, I'd like to get. We have a, a YouTube channel that Tommy was running, but of course he's in college, so it's been hard for him to do it. But we have a channel called TFL Classics. We do. And I'd love to get that up and running. So that would be the next thing. I think all the EV stuff is just going to go on TFL Car. We don't, I don't think. We don't, don't need to branch that off. And well, we got we, we need to focus so, on so, it. So done. let me know if you like uh, the idea of bringing back TFL Classics. I love old cars. Tommy loves old cars. And, uh, you know, maybe we can get some. Or in which way would you like to see them? Let yeah. us know. Because not a lot of classic video, classic car videos get views. Right, so, so that, we're, that's we're, good we're, we're struggling with that. Yeah, and keep in mind the average YouTube video that we produce makes less than 100 bucks and more like less than 50 bucks. And so to send out a whole, big budget. Yeah, to send out a whole team to go shoot the classic cars is not easy. So thank you guys, uh, happy new year. Come back tomorrow, same time, same place when Andre and Mr. Truck will be here to answer all your truck questions. Yes. Andre, um, hope you had a Merry Christmas. Hope you guys had a Merry yes. Christmas and see you guys Tomorrow. Merry Christmas, and a lot of people say Happy New Year, yep. but we're still going to see you this yeah. week. So, Black Money Man? Uh, yeah, hell yeah. Cool. All right, l let me play some music out. All right, bye. Let's, uh, oh, what, what is this? Oh, play it. Uh, hello. That is nothing. There you go. How bad is it? Good choice, Whoa. Whoa. Oh. This is really slow. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.